Okay, so for those of you that are with us this morning, if you can hear me, give me a, a thumbs up. I've, I've seen a few and you can tell me in the comments. You can then move on to fishing your stuff out of your bag. Thank you. Tuesday, today is Tuesday. So everybody got their bags yesterday and hopefully you pulled out that Monday packet and you went through the things that we discussed yesterday morning. Now today you can get out your big Tuesday bag that has all of the papers you need today. And then for this morning, the other two things we're going to do this morning, the Tuesday activity one bag and Tuesday activity two. So those are the two other things you're going to need this morning. Thank you, everybody. And in case anybody wasn't with us this morning, or just a reminder, if you um, are having any difficulty with your worksheets, Excellent. Thank you, Allie. Allie's got her bag of goodies. If you're having trouble discerning details because some of the copies were run in black and white, remember that you can go to your Google Drive and your teachers have posted those in, in the classroom so that you can access those sheets and see the images in color. Okay, so we mentioned yesterday um, a few that that was going to be especially helpful on, especially for the IMAG crime info, like the photos and the hair samples and the vehicle pictures. Those were the three that were most critically impacted there. All right, let's see if we have anybody else rolling in. We're doing pretty well, 9.04. Okay. So did everybody look at uh, the penny challenge? Did everyone pull out the penny challenge? It was this sheet. And remember your challenge. So you, you've seen lots of pennies in your, in your lives, I'm sure. And your challenge was to discern which is the correct image of the head side of the penny. So if you did that, and if you want to share which number you think was the correct image of the penny, go ahead and type that in the chat. And let's see what everybody thought. They're asking, the teachers are asking if you can send a link with this week's activities for teachers with the videos. So we can do that. We can follow up with that. Absolutely. All right. So did anyone have a guess as to which, or hopefully even better than a guess, as to which penny image was the correct uh, drawing of the head side of a penny. Don't see any numbers in the chat, but they are numbered from one to 15. So you have 15 versions to go by. And if you recall, I challenged you to check that out. And then only after uh, you determined which one you thought it was from all your times of looking at pennies, um, to then get out an actual penny and compare. So, let's, let's see if anybody got number seven. Did anybody get number seven? Oh, we've got one more waiting to get in. Let's check out. So for your, remember we said each day you guys are going to get a new challenge. You're going to get a mini mystery to solve each day. 
and a spot the difference. So those are three activities you'll get every single day in your bag that's labeled for that particular day of the week. So we're talking about the, um, the, the first challenge, the penny challenge that was given yesterday, okay? And if you have different bags, that's okay. Sometimes we run out of, there were lots of kits, so sometimes you run out of one kind of bag, but you'll have a, a big bag that has all of your Tuesday papers in it. And on one side, you'll see the smaller hair sample insert. And on the other side, you'll see uh, fabrics. You'll see fiber samples from knitted fabrics specifically, okay? So that's what you're looking for, for the bag with all of your papers, all right? And if anyone's having trouble with that, let's see. Ah, nice, so we had some guesses for number nine. So number nine was, was similar, but if you, Look at a penny, the one cent is not on the head side of the penny, it's on the back side of the penny. And so this is where it gets really tricky because sometimes our, we remember elements of things, but our, our brain likes to mix them up a little bit. And so that certainly does stand out. And I know when I was asking a group of people here, there were several that thought that the that number nine was correct as well. But if you pull out a penny and have and have a look, it's actually number seven. Okay, so you've got in God we trust across the top over Abraham Lincoln's head. You have the word liberty and then the date that the coin was minted. So those are the main elements on the head side of a penny that one cent is actually on the back side and then number 10 was really tricky elena because it has all the same elements all it did was swap the side of lincoln's head that the um, word liberty and that the date were on so that one was really tricky all right so that's a fun one you, you get a new challenge today Okay, now let's, while we're on a roll here with our, let's just go over our solutions for yesterday's mini mystery too. Did everyone get a chance? We read it together and I asked you to, to think about it. It's kind of like a riddle, right? And you were going to try to figure out what was going on here and how it could happen. So the case summary states, there was nothing Leon, the driver, could do about the impending crash of the car he was driving. Leon knew the car would be completely demolished in the crash. After the crash, Leon didn't have a scratch on him. How can that be? So that was your challenge to think about yesterday that was your mini mystery to solve yesterday if anyone would like to share how they thought this could possibly be so this is your your case summary your mini mystery from yesterday feel free to type in the chat how is it possible that leon knew the car was going to be destroyed in the crash and it was and yet he walked away without a scratch Okay, so tell me what you think there. Any guesses? Type it in the chat so everybody can see. What do we think, guys? How could Leon know that his car was going to be demolished and he's driving the car, but not a scratch? And the car was 
demolished. Any guesses? All right, so there were a couple of possible solutions. And one is that Leon was driving a remote control car. Does anyone think that it was a remote control car? And then another possible scenario was that he was playing a video game and driving the car in the video game and then his car was totaled, but his body would be just fine in that scenario, right? All right, so that's your, we solved your, your challenge, your daily challenge from yesterday and your mini mystery. So of your three um, challenges that you get daily, the last one left is your spot the difference. And for this particular spot the difference, it was a vending machine. Okay, so two different images of the vending machine. And you could either look at both pictures side by side, or if you really wanted to challenge yourself even further, you could look at both pictures separately and see if just from your recall, you could spot those differences. So have a look at that for a minute. If you didn't get a chance to yesterday, I want you to have a peek at it now. See if any of those things jump out to you. You've got seven differences between these two particular images. And I'll give you a moment before I show you where those differences lie. Thank you guys. A couple new folks joining us. So we just solved our a penny challenge from yesterday and we solved our mini mystery from yesterday. The penny challenge for those just joining us. If you guessed, if you chose number seven, image number seven on the penny challenge, then you were correct. So your penny challenge looked like this. And number seven was the correct image. And for the mini mystery yesterday, where Leon knew his car was going to be demolished and there was nothing he could do. And yet after the crash, it surely was destroyed and he was just fine. So we determined that he could have been driving a remote control car or playing a video game where he was driving the car and crashed it. So now hopefully everybody's gotten a chance to get out their Tuesday bag. Okay, from our Monday bag, we were reviewing our Spot the Difference game. Okay, and seeing where the seven differences were. All right. So there you go. So for your Tuesday bags, these papers, before we, you should you just get out your Tuesday bag, set it beside you. We're reviewing the ones from Wednesday bag, the, or for, I'm sorry, from uh, yesterday's bag, from Monday's bag. We're just going through, because you had those challenges presented yesterday. So we are um, going through the solutions for those. So for the Monday bag, you have the um, image with the two different vending machines. And here we go, because you do not have the solutions in your bag. Here are the seven differences. So if you look closely at the, um, the big image of the root beer bottle on the vending machine, one difference is the date. One, um, one vending machine shows since 1919, and the other one says since 1991. For A and W root beer. Um, another difference was the um, was the symbol, the um, right under the A and W logo that was on this image, but not on this one. Okay. 
And then we've got the um, buttons on the um, vending machine. You have a different order. You have an orange button on the top here and the blue button there. And on this side, it's the blue on the top and the orange there. So the order on those two buttons was switched. Possibly the most obvious was there's nothing in the slot on this one. And yet, here you go, in your vending slot there. And then the placement of the, um, the bill feeder where you drop in the coins or, or the bills. It's up here on this one, down here on this one. And I think the last one is, so that was six. So we are at <laughs> the misspelling of root in root beer. So this image is spelled correctly. And this one says reet beer, R-E-E-T, okay? All right, and so for the Tuesday bag, the one that I mentioned for you to just get out and have accessible, that's just the bag of papers. So yesterday we went over that because you have so many papers in this particular camp, we put all of the papers in a separate baggie for each day. So if you're looking for any papers for any particular day, they should all be in the bag labeled for that day of the week. And don't fret if your bag is a different, um, size than this one. You, this is a gigantic bag. We um, were using different types of bags, using up what we had. And so some of you had a bag with a slider across the top. Some of you had a bag that wasn't quite, quite as large. Okay. So, but you have a bag that had all your Monday papers in it that you looked at yesterday. Those were the solutions we just went over. And now your Tuesday bag. Okay. All right. So each day you have a new challenge, a new mini mystery, and a new spot the difference. And in your Tuesday bag, that's the, the, the same thing there. You have a, a challenge, a mini mystery, and a spot the difference. Okay, so we can go ahead and pull out the Tuesday papers from the Tuesday bag. Looking like everybody's with us. All right. So we've got some fun in store for us today. The two activities we're going to do together this morning, Tuesday activity one, which is in a, a gallon size bag and has a styrofoam plate, biggest, easiest thing to see. And it has a lipstick and Q-tips, okay? And index cards. So if everybody wants to fish that out of your kit, all right, you've got one of these in there. Okay, so we'll set aside our evidence. Thank you, excellent. I'm seeing everybody sharing their bags. Perfect, so Tuesday activity one, Pull out your Tuesday Activity One bag. Excellent, guys. All right. Thank you. And then from your Tuesday bag of papers, you were presented with some evidence for your IMAG crime. So you had the information in your packet yesterday. If you didn't get a look at that, know that you can go back and check that out. But these two little pieces of paper on the top of your packet, that's what those relate to, okay? So this is narrowing it down a little bit more. Yesterday, um, you had images of the hair samples of the individual suspects for the IMAG crime. And today, you were given the um, photographs of the hair evidence found at the crime scene so that you can try to match that to the hair samples of the subjects in your packet yesterday. And the other small piece was the footprints left yesterday, okay? Shoe impressions found at the scene of the crime. So you can set those two aside and you're going to get new evidence all week long. And that's, so that's one 
that unlike your mini mystery where we'll present the um, solution for that the following day, this is gonna be an ongoing mystery and you're gonna work all week long to see if you can solve it, okay? And only on the last day will we reveal what happens there. Okay, so. The, neck, the big sheet that you'll see has five red lips on it, okay? That one we're gonna use with this activity. So you can put that with your bag, okay? And yesterday, so we have our, um, yesterday we talked about impression evidence and we talked about how fingerprints were one type of impression evidence, okay? So now we're going to look at a different type of impression evidence that might be left at the scene of a crime. So remember for impression evidence, there is only an impression of an object, not the actual object left behind. So you may not necessarily have the teeth of a, of a criminal left at the crime scene, but you could have, um, if the criminal ate a banana or um, took a, or, or left um, a bite mark somewhere, um, then you could, you could look at the impression left behind by the teeth. So that even though you don't have the teeth, you have, um, some information to go by that tells you what those teeth might look like, okay? So, we're going to take both our teeth impressions and our lip impressions today. So that's why you have all of these materials in your Tuesday Activity 1 bag. So your styrofoam plate, you're going to want to fold it in half, okay? It doesn't have to be perfectly folded in half. You just wanna fold it so that when we bite our plate, we're going to leave an imprint in the top and an imprint in the bottom that we can look at independently, okay? So we get a good view of the impression that all of our teeth leave, okay? So, excellent, excellent. So just fold that plate, see the top and the bottom, and then you can, remember our ever important supply bag, okay? You can get a marker or a pencil and you can label that. We're gonna need our scissors in a little bit. We can pull those out, all right, so. One side is going to be the maxilla or your top jaw, okay, that's attached to your skull. That's our maxilla. And the bottom is going to be our mandible. That is the lower jaw that is hinged on, attached to your skull there, right? It's, it's a hinge joint. So you can move your lower jaw up and down, right? That's how we bite. That's how we chew, okay? So you can either label it first or label it after, that's up to you. But know that you wanna keep track of which is the top and which is the bottom, okay? So are you ready? I see you guys look ready. All right, so take a big old chomp you don't want to bite a piece out of the plate. You want to make sure you, you bear down and leave an impression of those teeth. So try not to move your teeth side to side. Try not to move them around too much. Just chop down. Okay. There you go. All right. Now... This so just shows that I didn't wear my retainers when I was supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to label, so I'm going to go ahead and label my maxilla on the top. 
mandible on the bottom. And I have a similar story, Ms. Fallon, because I um, was babysitting for a little girl who jumped off the stairs, happy to see me and wanted to give me a big old hug into my arms. And I wasn't expecting that. And she knocked my teeth back. So then my retainer didn't fit anymore. And that was the end of that. All right, so if you get a look here, I'm gonna take this up closer to the camera. You should be able to see. Can you see that, Matt? Hey guys, the students oh, are asking you. if you could spell it in the chat for them so they can put oh, the yes. spelling. Oh, yes, absolutely. I'll hold that, Matt. Can you spell maxilla and mandible? So M-A-X-I-L-L-A, -L -L -A, maxilla, is the top jaw. Okay, so your top teeth are attached to your maxilla and the lower jaw, I'll flip that over so you can see it too, is the mandible, M-A-N-D-I-B-L-E, okay? And I got some really good impressions there, okay? And it so if you look very closely, some of you may have perfectly straight teeth. Much of the world does not have perfectly straight teeth. And you um, get some interesting identifiable characteristics there. Um, so you can, when we were looking at mine, you can see where this tooth got pushed back. And it is, it's set further back than all the rest. And then depending on how far you were able to get the plate into your mouth, um, you may even see the impression of some of your molars. So the teeth in the front that are for biting and tearing food, they have thinner bottoms, right? So that you can, they work like a wedge. We go back to our simple machine, they go down into the food and tear pieces off, okay? Then, and, and that's common in carnivores and in omnivores. The molars are more typical of what you would see in um, exclusively an herbivore. So herbivores will often have just teeth that are similar to our molars where they are, have these really wide flat surfaces to um to work and break down the plant material as they chew it i can i can spell it more slowly or do you do you guys see it in the in the chat chat yeah. and thank you miss fallon for placing that there question. okay great i have a question yes yes go ahead you can ask your question or type it in the chat uh, what is the sharp teeth next to our molars? What is you have the incisors? Yeah. Oh, yes. So they really help to tear it away, right? If, if you're taking a bite of meat, that really helps to kind of tear it away. Okay, so he's pointing out that, <laughs> that um, you've got different teeth shapes, right? And so you can see those would just leave a little point, depending on how, how far down you bit, right? And you know what else we didn't discuss here? What if some teeth were missing? Okay, because that's an identifying characteristic there too. All right? So that's, that's a fun one. Thank you, guys. All right, so I'm going to set this aside. And then... You can so do. students, I have a question for the students. Did yeah. anyone get their plate far enough back? Like when I, because I tried to get all of my teeth and when I pulled it out towards the back, I could see that there were two impressions instead of just yeah. one. And that's because yeah. I was able to get my back molars that are bigger. So I was able to see two impressions. It's very hard to see it on this, but look at your plate. And if not, while it's folded, Try biting it a little bit further back and see if you can get two of those indentions because it actually looked really neat 
when I was looking at mine, it was like a nice row and then two. And I was like, why do I have two? And I had a feeling there. And I was like, oh, because that tooth back there is bigger. It's like this. It's not like the ones that are straight down. So it's very exactly. interesting. And since we are not, since we're not exclusively herbivores, our, the tops of our, of our molars are not completely flat. They have, so what she saw was the two protuberances, protuberances on the front of the molar. If she had gotten it even farther back, most people will have four, okay, on, on each molar. And if you feel um, your teeth, the tops and bottoms of your molars, you may even be able to feel that. So it's like the corners of your molars stick up further. And so you can see four dots instead of just one for that one two. okay? Very and cool. some of you guys are of age that you might start going to the dentist um, for, well, you should be going to the dentist, but for um, orthodontics, now that you guys are getting older, fifth grade is about the year, sixth grade that you put braces on. So they'll actually take really neat molds of your teeth. And if you guys do that, ask to see them. Um, they'll let you look at them and study them, and then you can see how your teeth move as they're tightening the braces. My daughter um, is actually getting her braces off this summer, um, and so to see her teeth move is very, very cool, because the last time I saw that, it was happening to me, and I didn't think it was cool. It hurt, but that would be something, very, now that you guys have, have done this with the Imaginarium, and you go to um, the orthodontist, now you kind of understand a little bit of um, what's going on behind it, so thank you, Imaginarium. Yes. That is pretty cool. And it may be hard for you to get something all the way in the back of your mouth, but when you are at the dentist, they, they put a bite plate in there. They put a bite tray in there and they're checking all the way around. So you'll see that horseshoe image, right? Of all of those teeth. So that's a cool one to look at. All right, so we have the impression evidence that our teeth can leave behind, but even your lips can leave an impression. Okay, and while they may not be um, as commonly thought of as your fingertips, your fingerprints, right? The lips do have um, some grooves to them, and those are going to be more prominent when we take an impression. So let's try that one. You all have a lipstick in your bag, okay? And you can apply the lipstick. And I will fess up here that I don't, I use chapstick, that's about it. <laughs> I don't wear lipstick, so I may be really bad at this, and that's okay. We just wanna get some on the lips. Okay. Even the boys? Even the boys, you gotta no. see your lips, okay? Why? You can wash it off right after. You can wash it off right after. Oh, no girl, off. for one second then. <laughs> so we remember just like we put ink on our fingertips to be able to easily see our fingerprints then we're doing the um lipstick just to more easily see our lip print all right and so you're going to want to press your um so you can kind of open your lips a little bit so that you can get as much of the lip on your image so you want to kind of like that okay and I'm gonna press it, and just like we did before, so you don't wanna smear it back and forth, right? You just wanna press firmly, all right? Okay, all right. I'm gonna bring mine up. You see that, Matt? Okay, so there's mine. Have a look at yours, all right? Because what you wanna do, just like when we did the fingerprints, we were looking for arches, we were looking for whirls, we were looking for loops, right? With your lip prints, you're looking at what, what do those ridges on your lips, they may not be quite as prominent as on your fingertips, but there are ridges on your lips do, are the grooves in between, are they straight up and down? Are they really long? Do they go um, all the way up and down? Or are they really short? Are they diamond-shaped grooves? Some people have kind of 
where the lines cross one another, okay? So those are some of the things that you want to look at. And some will even look like um, they branch off of one another, okay? Like a Y shape. All right, so that's something cool for you guys to do. And then you can wipe it off, wash it off, okay? All right, thank you guys. All right, that's a fun one. All right, and then shoe impressions are another type of impression evidence that may be found at a crime scene. Oh, Miss Fallon got great ones. Oh, everybody look at hers. Can everybody see Miss Fallon's screen there? Oh, that is amazing. So so she has if, I ever, if I ever commit a crime, <laughs> I'm going to be ID'd right away because I wear lipstick all the time. <laughs> She's I, I cannot take off That's lipstick. excellent. Right, guys? <laughs> Don't I wear lipstick every day? So if I commit a crime, I'm not going to get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> Even though you're still wearing She'll leave her mark behind. So have a look at that because she had the vertical grooves, but she also has the branching grooves. So I just had a lot of vertical grooves. She has nice branching grooves there. Very cool. I can't so see what yours look like. So and guys, then, so a, even a even the boys. Water, it'll come up. Yeah, even the boys. Listen, no one's gonna look at you. Just put it on, kiss it, wipe it off, and then show us your your thing. This is science. <laughs> Come on, Mr. Toll. Where's Mr. Toll? All in the name of science. <laughs> that's excellent. But that's so cool because now I'm go what I'm going to do is I'm going to look <laughs> at this paper. This yes. one right here, guys. That was in our Tuesday packet. And now I'm going to compare what kind of lines I have because I've never looked that close before. That is really <laughs> neat. That is really neat. What if what that if we messed really up in the first time? Could we do it again? Yeah, there's a back. absolutely. That's yep. You have more cards for that very reason, okay? And you can use any kind of white paper. But there you go. And then and you can test opening your mouth more so you get more of the the lip. You can see if the position. I put the lipstick on already. Mine so had a great. Maite said she did it with her sister, too, because that's what I'm going to do. As soon as my son's done, I'm going to put some lipstick on him, and I want to see how his <laughs> lips compare to my lips. Miss G. Miss Let G. me see, Anthony. If you're really I get pretty. <laughs> if you're really having trouble with it flat, too, you could try it the same way we did the plate. You don't have to, you could fold it. Or just do the top and bottom of the card, okay? So whatever, if that if that's easier for you, fold the card and do it that way and see what you get, okay? And ladies, cards to play with. when you grow up and you put lipstick on, you actually should blot like this every time before so it looks nice and sheen and it will stay on. So a little bit of, of makeup for you, 101. <laughs> That includes Anthony, too. <laughs> Why are you bullying me, Mr. Tall? Yeah, I watched it. You're never going to let it down. Getting so much of it on your teeth, Where's yeah. yours, then? Let me see you, Mr. Tall. Let me see. Yeah, you. come on, Mr. Tall. We want to see it. I'm don't sorry. be shy, <laughs> Mrs. Tall. One Tom. time, you'll never catch me. Mrs. Yeah. Tall, don't be shy. <laughs> Look. You're obviously you not. You did great work. Oh, that's awesome, Anthony. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, go over the last impression evidence oh. that you're gonna take this morning. And I want to um, challenge you to try this with different shoes, okay? You, and you could try it without shoes too, but so um, shoe impressions are another type of impression evidence that can be left behind, okay? So you've got that one that um, tells you what you need to do. Let's see, and just, there was another piece that went with that. There we go. Okay, so this is what you have in your bag on top of that, right? You have this impression evidence, and then this is something you guys are going to work on after we're done here. See this impression evidence sheet that you're going to work your way through? Okay. 
taking bits and pieces from what we've done and learned here. But to do your shoe impressions, you can use the same plate if you'd like, okay? And this will just help you, and you don't need to use a plate. A plate will just help keep it contained. You could use just a big piece of paper, but you have, oh, let's hold it so you can see the label, Tuesday Activity 2 in a small Ziploc bag. And that has a piece of black paper that's folded up in there for you and some flour, okay? So white flour. Remember we talked when we were doing our fingerprints yesterday, we talked about how a very fine powder um, can give us more precise impressions. So flour is a very finely milled grain. It's a very fine powder. So flour works really well for this because different shoes have different, um, different textures on the bottom and will leave a different print. And you've probably noticed that more when you're at the beach or you go through mud because you can see that print left behind, all right? So if you'd like, you can put the flower on a plate or you can put it on a, a different piece of paper, okay? And then you wanna use this black piece of paper that's all folded up to step on immediately after you step in your flower, okay? So you're going to put your plate or paper that you put the flower on, newspaper would be great, step in that flower, and then step right on the paper directly after. So you wanna make sure that you set it up close, okay? What is the label right. called? The label says Tuesday activity number two. And it's just a smaller bag, like a quart size um, baggie. And all it had in it was this folded up piece of black paper and the white container of flour. You've got a lot of stuff in this bag, so you might have to dig around, okay? So what I'd like you to do first, Allie's asking if we step on it with your shoe or your foot, it would be better to do your shoe print first, okay? And then as a, as a, as a challenge afterwards, if you wanna try it with a bare foot, I think that would be cool too. Um, did anybody take their toe prints yesterday? Tell me in the chat if anybody did their toe prints yesterday, because that was one of the extra challenges you could do. We gave you a sheet to do your toe prints just like you did your fingerprints. So that's kind of taking that a little farther if you want to. But, and you could try it with different shoes. So if you have sneakers, sneakers because um, the traction is important when you're running, Sneakers often have really cool um, prints on the bottom because they have lots of pieces that stick up, okay? So you'll get a really good impression. All right, so I don't wanna make you too late here. We've got our, we're, it's 9.45 if anybody is watching the time. And at 10.30, we've got our Meet the Keeper Zoom call for anybody who wants to turn uh, to tune into that, okay? So I think that I'll leave this so that we can go over a few things and, and share my screen, all right? Because I think you guys can understand what to do now. Put the flower on the plate or on like a piece of newspaper and then set directly in the flower and then directly onto the black paper. And remember, just one firm press down. You don't want to smear it side to side or forward and back, okay? Move it around too much. You just wanna press firmly down and back up. Just like when we're doing the um, fingerprints and the lip prints and everything, when you make an impression, the best way to get a really precise impression is to minimize movement. Just go straight down, firm, and come back up. Okay? All right. Excellent. Mr. Matt, let's share the um, PowerPoint so they can get an image of that. Because these you don't have in your packet. So I want to make sure you get a peek at these. 
There we go. So see that that shoe imprint right there? So remember I said sneakers often have uh, treads on the bottom um, or areas that, that stick up and make good contact with the ground. So, oh, and look at that bite impression there. So that's what, that's what we were discussing from the dentist, okay? So that's a full um, impression there. And you can see how we were talking about the molars and how the corners of the molars stick up more. And so you have these kind of valleys in between. So look at that. So you have a much deeper impression on the outsides of the teeth there, okay? So two really good images there, really good images. Can you can you see this the screen? Okay, so Matthew says he's not seeing it. Was that just a delay or is everybody seeing? It looks like we're su successfully sharing, but I'd like to see confirmation in the chat. Can anybody type me a response? If you can see right now, it says collection methods is the slide that's up. And it has a picture of a shoe print left in what looks like really good clay soil. Okay. And then at the bottom, um, it's the soil is not as red. And then you've got a biofoam impression, which um, can be used for comparison purposes. Um, let's see. All right. Maite says she can see it. Okay, good. Thank you guys. Appreciate that. All right, let's go on to the next page. All right, so tire tracks. So this is another form of impression evidence that um, is often left at the scene. And tires are really neat because you have an object that's round, right? But it leaves this linear print and, so, and sometimes how that um, looks when it's elongated can be a little surprising. So check that out. And you may have, if there's a defect in the tire, you may notice that in, in certain spots. So that can help to identify a vehicle, um, at least the tires on the vehicle. But the um, tool marks, so this is something you guys are gonna do later. This is, this is a cool one. So um, this is how they can tell what kind of a weapon might have been used or what kind of a tool may have been used to, um, to cut something, okay? Um, you can, you know, look at ridges um, from a, the blade of a knife or um, from, an, you know, from an axe or from a hammer. Um, you're going to have different kinds of marks, and some of them can be very individualized, okay? So that's that's another one, all right? You can go on to the next page. And then it shows more on shoe prints, so different brands of shoes. All right. <laughs> can I I'm getting some movie humor in there and so remember too that um, the the prints of so you may be able to determine the shoe but you may also be able to term, determine how um, tall a person is from how far away the prints are or if they were walking or running okay so that's cool more on bite marks um, and so I want to make sure we get to, that was. I did the shoe print. You did the shoe print? Excellent. Yeah. Good. I wanted to make sure you guys had time to do this. Oh, that's a really great one. Anthony, that's fabulous. Look at that. You had a good shoe for it. I looked at my shoe this morning and I thought, oh man, mine's not, I'm just wearing a flat and it's really a pretty flat bottom. It's not a very impressive one. That is great. I love that. Thank All right. You. Thank you. All right. So definitely try those guys. And that's cool. And if you have um, an area outside, if you have like concrete outside, you may even try it where you put the flower down and you step both feet in it and then step on the concrete. You can always hose that off. If it's outside, don't do that inside your parents' house. Um, but 
If it's outside, you can always hose it down afterwards. Oh, that's a nice one. Good work. You guys did great. You have some good shoes for this too. See, and you're at home, so you can change shoes and try it out different ways. That's really cool. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Type them in the chat if you have any questions. I want to make sure I don't leave you guys hanging if there's anything else you want to know or need to know. No, I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to Thank say that guys. the flower just made me sneeze. <laughs> because it's such a very fine powder, it's very easy for that flower to go up into the air, right? And then when you get it in your nostrils, <laughs> you're like, oh. <laughs> the day was very uh, fun. Thanks, guys. Thank very, you all. Very informative. That's great. All right. Well, you guys have fun with that today, and then you're doing some really cool stuff this afternoon. I'm excited for you all to tackle the activities this afternoon. So I'm glad everybody has their stuff. We got some good teeth prints and lip prints and um, shoe prints this morning. So three more kinds of impression evidence on top of our fingerprints and maybe toe prints that we did yesterday. All right. And way more um, fun to be had this afternoon. So you guys are going to um, take it a whole lot further. And remember, you have, you have um, your um, challenges. So let me give you, you have it in your bag, but let's go over together before we go, your um, day two mini mystery. Okay, so we're going to read that real quick before we um, sign off here. Harborville's Beach Snack Shop had been open only an hour when Matt stopped in and noticed a new poster announcing a price increase. I put the sign up this morning, Mr. Levine told him. I had to raise my prices 10% because I have so many new expenses. Like now, I need a new window for my back room. Somebody broke it trying to get into my store last night. Have you called the police, Max asked? Mr. Levine replied, no, nothing was stolen. He led Max to a small storeroom in the back and said, I use this space as an office. Sat here and made my price change poster last night. Soon as I was done, I left it on that old desk. I locked the door to the main part of my store when I left. So whoever got in was stuck in this little storeroom. There's nothing here to steal. When Max left, he wandered down to the break wall where Nathan and Trevor were fishing. Did you hear that somebody broke a window at the shack, he asked. Nope, Nathan said. We've been here since dawn and haven't talked to anybody. Trevor gestured to the bucket. We've caught some big ones, Nathan stood, but now I'm starving. I've got a dollar left from my allowance. If Mr. Levine. You're on mute. Imaginarium, all of a sudden you went on mute. Um, can we type that they can read? You're good, You're good now. The rest no, of you. Oh, are we back in? Yeah. Okay. All right, it gave me a battery low. All right, so where did I cut off? We've caught some big ones, but now I'm starving. Did you guys hear that? Yes, right you, there is good. Okay, and you have the sheet in your, in your Tuesday bag. I've got a dollar left for my allowance. If Mr. Levine is there now, I'm going up to the shack to get a big beach bun. Better get another dime from somewhere, Trevor told him. A dollar's not enough anymore. As for me, I'm going home to get a couple sandwiches for myself. You both stay right here, Max said. I know which one of you broke that with You'd better think of a way to pay for it because I'm telling Mr. Levine. So how did Max figure it out? All right, that's your challenge, all right? So that's your mystery for today. Okay. We'll talk about that one tomorrow. See if you can figure it out. Thank you, everybody. Bye. Have a great day.